everybody. Welcome to week 12 of 3D Basics. Today we are looking at armatures and rigs and how you use them to animate a character. So uh, we'll kind of walk through the steps together using the model that, uh, that I made last week. And then we'll talk about assignment six, which is your last assignment before the final project of the semester. So rolling right through it. Uh, just a reminder, next week is, uh, is a workshop day. So uh, once again, you will not have a, any lecture or Zoom or whatever from me next week. Um, so just look at the course schedule on D12 if you have any doubts about that. So let's jump right into it. Here we are in Blender. Uh, before we look at the character, I just want to like talk about what an armature and a rig even is. Um, so let's start a new general file. So what an armature is, is it is the bones of a character. So uh, we're going to start by just m like making a worm, basically. <laughs> Um, and uh, giving it like bones and just kind of doing a little inchworm thing. And then we'll look at how to do it for a whole body. So uh, to start, let's delete this cube. And I'm going to shift A. I want to add a cylinder. I'm going to open up my add cylinder menu here. And uh, I'm just going to make it a little, oops, a little longer like this. And uh, rather than end gons, I want a triangle fan for my cat fill. Perfect. I'm going to go tab for edit mode. And I just realized I don't have my keystrokes on. And I'll do control R to loop cut if it'll let me. Control R. Control R. Here we go. And I'm going to middle mouse wheel up a bunch to make a bunch of cuts like this. And then right click to apply that. So we've got like a pretty even set of polygons here. I could have also maybe done a shade smooth or something like that. Or you know, we I could even still do that. Control two uh, is subdivide and then we can shade smooth like this. All right, so here's our worm. Uh, why don't I even just like RX 90 like this, cool. So let's add a bone to here. So we'll go shift A to bring up our add menu, go down to armature here, and we have single bone. So let's click on that. So it may be like hidden. So it's actually kind of inside here. So what we can do, or what I like to do, and what a lot of people do when they're creating armatures, is uh, they can go, we can go into the object data properties here, which is like the screen person running. Click on that and open up viewport display. And you have this checkbox that says in front. So show in front. And if you click that, you can see that now we can see it. Um, but it's like, it's, we can always see it on top of other things. So it kind of, you know, the, the confusing perspective may may hit you a little bit, but um, this is this is kind of how a lot of people work with armatures, so that you can always see it through things. Um, so let's let's talk about working with working with bones. Um, so bones in an armature or on a character in three D function as pretty much as they do in the human body. So um, anywhere that you want there to be uh, movement or a joint, you're gonna have a bone. So like if, if you wanted to animate the arm, you'd have a bone start here and then maybe end at the elbow. And then you, since you wanna have bending here, you'd have another bone that goes from here out to the wrist. And then bending here, you probably have another one that goes to here and then one for each finger if you wanted to do fingers. Or if you only wanted to have robot arms like this, you could just have one bone that went from the shoulder all the way to the finger. And so this is, you know, that's all you'd be able to do. So 
more bones equals more movement. Um, so editing your bones, uh, or editing your armature is as simple as doing edit mode. So we can, with my armature selected here, actually I shouldn't label this, This will, we'll call this worm, and then armature. With the armature selected, and actually before I even do that, like let's examine this. So a bone has like two points uh, signaled by kind of the little balls here. Imagine and imagine the balls being joints, and this kind of shape in the middle being the bone in between the joints. And it it sort of signals a direction. So like this is outwards. So if I go tab for edit mode, um, I can add select one of these joints here and hit the G key and move it around. Or I can hit the the select the bone and R rotate like this. You can also S scale. But the 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 thing to realize is that um, they don't, it doesn't actually have, a bone doesn't actually have scale. It's only measuring between, it's like a straight line between the two points. So if I select this top joint, I can G, and as I G move it down, it makes it smaller. And as I move it away, it makes it appear larger. Um, so the scale um, is not, doesn't necessarily, doesn't really mean anything. It's just scaling the distance between the two points. Anyway, um, so I can go GZ and move this back down like this. Now to add a bone, a bone. <laughs> I was like <laughs> combining bone and joint. Um, select a joint and hit the E key like you're extruding. E extrude and you're extruding out another bone. And E extrude, E extrude, you know, left click, E extrude, left click, E extrude, left click, you know. So this is like, this would be a snake. Or like, you can go back here and say like, okay, and now E extrude out of here again. So now this is like a crazy double snake. So this is like a crazy skeleton of like a cactus or cactus, a weird plant or like a crazy serpent. Um, and, and that's, that's a, as, as simple as it, as it gets really just E extrude and then G move. Um, there, there obviously are a lot more complicated aspects to creating armatures and things as characters get more complicated. Um, but like this is this is kind of the basics of it. Um, this is again one of those things where, like in major motion pictures, like in Disney, there's like a whole team of people dedicated just to creating armatures and rigging. Like if you watch the credits to and Kanto or whatever, there's like there's a list of ten people that that do rigging, character rigging. Um, so let's let's actually do something with our with our worm here. So I'm going to delete this armature and start fresh a little bit. Um, and it's it's usually a good idea to to work with an orthographic view when you're doing um, armatures, so that uh, you know that you're getting things lined up the way you want. So shift A, I'm going to add a single bone. I'm going to go back to my object data properties here, this green little person, and show in front here since I moved that. Uh, I'm going to GY, move this all the way here to the end, and then I'm going to R90 minus 90. Cool. Because I wanted, you know, it, it doesn't have to be exactly in the middle, but, I, you know, as someone who's sort of a perfectionist, um, it makes me feel good. Um, and so I'm going to go tab for edit mode. I'm going to select this joint here and I'm just going to add like four or five bones all the way down the line here until we get to the, the end of the worm. So I might just kind of move this one in a little bit and hit Y. So I'm moving right along the axis there. And then I'm going to EY extrude out again like this, EY, EY, EY. Perfect. So now we have our armature, but uh, we need it. We need to connect the armature to the worm, to the character. So we do the. It's actually done sort of through parenting. So the the order that you need to do this matters. So first, uh, so I I had I went tab to get back into object mode. So we've got our two objects here: the armature and the worm. So first, 
I'm selecting the worm, the model, the mesh, holding down the shift key, and then selecting the armature. This is another reason why it's handy to, ha to sh do show in front because a lot of times it's just buried inside. So again, that's select your mesh first, hold down the shift key, and then select the worm. Or sorry, then select the armature. So the, uh, the armature is our active selection, the worm is our uh, other selection. And then uh, we'll bring up the parenting menu. So either through object, parent, or hitting control P. And we wanna do armature deform. And then you can see, uh, because we have an armature selected, these our parenting menu has a few additional options. Um, armature deform, uh, with empty groups, envelope weights, automatic weights. The one we want is automatic weights. And I'll explain what this means in a second. So you can see that uh, now our worm was parented to the armature. Uh, and so you can see up here uh, in our scene collection, um, the worm is now like within armature. So like the worm is in here, but there's a, there's a few other things here. So it's got like, it shows all of our bones. Um, we've got like vertex groups in here as well. There's bone, bone one, bone two, bone three, bone four. And so if, if you remember back to when we did um, the particles, we did the weight paint for the, the branches on the tree. Um, weight paint is also used for um, armatures and rigs. And so what it does is it does a little math and it decides which vertex vertices are uh, assigned to each bone. So when a bone moves, it determines which part of the mesh moves with that bone. So let's let's look at, at how this how we did this or how it worked. Uh, with the armature selected, up here in the top left above my head, uh, if you hit the drop down for object mode, we now have pose mode. So if you hit that, we can now grab any of these bones. Uh, they're highlighted, they become highlighted in teal. And you can like R rotate and it's gonna move the mesh with it. And so like, it's, you know, it's a chain effect. So if you think about like, you know, your shoulder is, I'm trying to get a good angle on this. <laughs> your shoulder is connected to your elbow, which is connected to your wrist. So when I move my shoulder, everything that's attached to it also moves with it. But if I keep my shoulder still and I move my elbow, the shoulder stays still, but my wrist and my fingers all move with it. So back in Blender, if I move this bone here, if I rotate this, everything that's attached to it further down the line is also moving with it. So I'm just, I'm selecting a bone, hitting the R key to rotate. And so we've, we've got a worm. Now this it's, it is important to have enough, uh, enough geometry, enough um, vertices to work with. So here, actually, I'll look, before I move on to that, I'll, I'll just show you the weight paint real quick. Um, so if I go, if I select um, a vertex group, let's go back to edit mode. So you can see uh, if I switch between pose mode and edit mode, the pose mode is like setting poses, but if we go back to edit mode or object, no, object mode maintains the pose, but if you go back to edit mode, it kind of lines it up where it originally was. Um, so if we look at, I just want to show you the, maybe, uh, do, 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 do. here we go, weight paint. Um, so you can see that like where it's red here, you know, these are assigned to that first bone. Uh, so, if you, so I've got this first bone selected, bone one, these are the vertexes that will move with bone bone zero zero one. These are the ones that will move with bone zero zero two. Oops, undo. These are the ones that will move with three, and these are the ones that will move with four. So, um, and the, it can be adjusted too, but be careful, because like if I all of a sudden I start painting over here, like if I move this bone, it's going to move this part of the mesh over here, and that's a little chunky. So, 
just a reminder, what we did was we did um, when we oops, when we did the parenting to the armature, we said with automatic weights. And so that's create doing the weighting of the vertexes for each bone automatically. And usually it does a pretty good job. If you have a kind of a complicated mesh, you may need to come in and adjust this a little bit, do a little a bit of painting. Because maybe like you're moving the arm and also it's moving the head. And it's like, oh, well, no, that's, that's not helpful. Okay. Um, let me go back to object mode. Okay, real quick. So a lesson about um, using, having enough geometry. So I'll, I'll show you what happens if you don't have enough geometry. So I'm gonna shift A, whoops, in here. I'm gonna shift A, add another cylinder. Um, but instead, let's make this just like 12, 12 vertices like this. And uh, you know, move it down along the Y a little bit so we've got room. Okay, and then um, I'm just going to add like, oops, so go into edit mode tab, and I'm going to just add like two loop cuts like this. And then but go back to object RX90. And now let me do the same thing. So I'm going to shift A, add a uh, armature single bone. Uh, let me go three for my orthographic view. And GY, move this over here. Where's my single bone? Armature zero zero one, GY, here it there it is. Where'd it go? Uh, I need it to. I'm gonna do show in front because I lost it. GY. R minus ninety. Oops. Okay. Uh, and then I'm gonna GY, kind of do the same thing. So EY extrude. EY extrude, EY extrude, EY extrude. Okay. And now uh, I'm going to select my cylinder. This is this would be like bad worm. Uh, and so select the cylinder first, hold down the shift key, then click the armature. And then I'll open up my parenting menu, control P. Armature to form with automatic weights. Okay. So now, pose mode. So this, remember, this is the low geometry method. If I rotate like this, and then rotate like this, you can see that you know it's already not kind of doing what I want it to do. So like I would expect here that like if I'm moving this one, I I don't want to be moving the base of it here. But see, it's like all moving together. And that's because if I go back to uh, object mode and then do weight paint, uh, armature zero zero one, look up, click on my different bones. So yeah, bone one is pulling like way further back than I want it to because there's not enough vertexes. So anyway, that is, that's why that is. <laughs> Okay, I'll save this real quick, just for good measure. We'll call this worms. Save Blender file. Okay, but let's talk about now how you do this with a character. So I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna open um, my humanoid model. I have provide. This is the one from last week. I have provided the um, link to this to download this uh, below. So you can follow along with this model if you want. If you made a model last week, you can use that. If you have found a model on the internet that you want to use, fine. Be careful. Um, a lot of times found models are and free found models are very messy. The geometry is uh, can be very complicated. Um, so just user beware. Um, if you run into issues or if things are getting all wonky, just go back, go back to this one or your own. So th the first thing we should do actually is going to be a big time saver, hopefully for you. Um, there are many plugins built into Blender that do, th do things automatically for you. So rather than making every single bone in this body, 
Um, let's start with a template. So you notice that um, in our add menu here, we just have single bone, but follow along. Um, go up to your edit menu, edit, and go down to preferences. And uh, you have this add-ons area here and search for rigify, R-I-G-I-F-Y is what it is. It may already be enabled for you, uh, but uh, if it's not, click this checkbox here to enable it. And uh, this will uh, give us some more options and make our lives a little bit easier here. Uh, great. So now, uh, what? Let's let's see what happens in our add menu. So go Shift A, add armature, and now we have more options: human, meta rig, animals. You've got a bird, a cat, a horse, a shark, a wolf. Some basic ones: basic human, basic quadruped. Um, just for fun, add in this human one here. Um, it may be like hiding, uh, but just S scale it up. And you can see that it's like a fully automated, automatically generated like human face. So it's got all five fingers. It's got, you know, all the arms and legs. It's got toes. It's also got like a fully formed face here. So like eyebrows, eyelids, eyes, mouth, nose, chin, the, the works. So this is like a very, very complex one. Um, but, uh, there, there are simpler ones too. So I'm, I'm gonna actually delete this matter. But and let's shift A add just the a basic basic human. So this has a, has a few more, um, or a few less bones, and it'll be a little easier for us to work with. So it's it's hiding in the middle here. So I'm gonna go to my object data properties, and uh, da, 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 in viewport display, I'm gonna turn on in front. So for the the sake of simplicity. Um, with our model, we have uh, we actually have a few different meshes in here. We have person, um, and then our spheres, and our teeth in here. Actually, <laughs> teeth. Um, what are these things? Oh, I'm gonna delete cube zero zero one, and I'm also gonna delete this cylinder. But for the sake of simplicity, I'm gonna select um, my person, my sphere, my teeth, and I'm going to join all of these meshes together into one mesh. So I'm just gonna right click and hit join or control J. So then we just have person here. Um, I'm also going to, uh, so the, the, the thing that can mess things up a little bit as you're doing this is the scale of things. So um, this was the size of the, the meta rig when I brought it in, and this is the size of our person. Um, rather than um, change the scale of the object, I'm actually gonna change, like go into edit mode and change the scale. And I'm also gonna leave the, the scale of the meta rig at one. So like it, things play nicer if the scale is one for everything. So I'll, I'm gonna go into my person, I'm gonna hit tab for edit mode. I'm going to do A for all, and I'm going to scale, oops, and I'm also going to, just for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to apply um, my mirror modifier. So I'm going to, oops, I need to go back to object mode. I need to apply the mirror modifier. I need to apply the subdivision. This is just going to make it, make it play a little nicer. Okay, tab in the object mode, S to scale down. And I'm going to uh, just like GZ position it near GZ position it near the thing here. I'm going to S scale it down a little bit. GZ. Oops, that was maybe a little bit too much. S scale it up. So I just I want it to be pretty close to uh, the right size. Get my orthographic views. It turns out my person is not very proportional to a regular human. <laughs> maybe maybe I will. No, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna like stretch at all. Gz, move it up a little bit. Okay, that's not bad. So I'm doing this in edit mode so that the scale of my object stays about the same. Cool. All right. So uh, tab again. So we've got 
our person, and we've got our meta rig. All right, so now let's position our bones. So, uh, you know, this this is maybe a little bit of a tedious process, but um, we'll, we'll try to go through it pretty quickly. So, um, so we're going to select our meta rig, hit tab for edit mode. And now we're just going to kind of move all the joints to kind of where we relatively think they should be. Now, one important thing here, if, if I grab one on the right, um, it would be nice if, uh, if it mirrored it on the left too. So we only had to do half the body and it would automatically do the other half. Very easy. Up here, top right, above my head, there's this little butterfly thing. Apply changes in matching bone on opposite side of X axis. So we definitely want that. So check that. So now if I move this one here, it moves it on the other side. So uh, I'm going to start with my front view and try to line things up. Then we'll go to the side view to try to get everything lined up. Um, so I'm just going to G kind of move this to the elbow, G move this one to the wrist. Whoops. Make sure I'm still in my orthographic view. It's like this one, G move this one to the end of the hand. Um, this is like kind of out to the shoulder here. So we've got a couple different parts of the neck. This one goes to the head. Um, let's see, let's, let's look at these ones down here. So here's like hips. This is like the bottom of the spine. This is like pelvis here. This is knees. This one will be like heel of the foot. Yeah, okay. These ones, this is like chest. We'll kind of line some of these ones up a little bit better when, uh, when, we're ha when we're in the side view. Speaking of, let's just do it. So this one is like ball of the foot and that's toe. So we want this one to kind of go down all the way here. This one to move forward a little bit. Um, the general idea here is that you do want these to be um, like, oh my, see, I, and I forget, I can't really tell which one I'm grabbing sometimes. Um, you want them to be pretty close to their like relative position, like where they would be in your body too. So like, uh, think about your elbow, like your elbow joint, is hold on your elbow joint is like pretty close to the the edge of your like by <laughs> your flesh and there's like more meat on the top here so like your elbow bends here and then like your your guts kind of bunch up in the front here so like if imagine if like your elbow were here on top everything would be like stretched around the outside and it would be kind of a clean joint here. So anyway, the point is like, you're trying to get the positioning of the bones relatively accurate. So now uh, let's do the neck ones. G, uh, the head and neck. So I'm just grabbing the joints and kind of placing them where the spine would be. Because like, think about like, you know, when you move your head, like it kind of, the movement comes from the back. And so uh, like when you put your chin down, it kind of the flesh bunches up in the front here. These ones are all gonna come back. Uh, this one, I'm gonna GY, move that one to the back. And you know, as the more characters you rig, the the more you'll kind of understand the results of, of this. All right, I think we're at a, like an okay spot just to like, as a proof of concept. I might move this one forward a little bit. And this one, okay, sure. We'll call that, oh yeah, my feet. GX, GX, <gasps> cool. And like, we can also just move these ones to GX. Um, these things in the back are sort of like the, the heel control things. You'll, you'll maybe kind of see them or under, see how they work. Uh, I think these ones need to come in just a little bit. All right. I feel, I feel good about this. Okay. Tab to get back into object mode. So, um, 
I'm selecting, so this, using a rigify now is two steps. So we, we're, we have the armature, but now, okay, <laughs> let's, let's talk before I even take a step further. Armatures. The armature is the skeleton. It's the bones. Rigify, or rigs, a rig in general. A rig is something that controls a skeleton. And it's, it makes animating easier. Um, creating your own rig is a very tedious process. So using something like Rigify uh, is going to help you out a lot. And there are other like third-party rigging things. Um, but I would say very rarely do, do people just create their own rigs from scratch. So um, imagine like you have um, a marionette. And the marionette has, you know, like one of those creepy things that like hangs on strings. Backstreet Boys. Um, a, a marionette, you know, has all the different bones. It has all the different pieces. But there's the the thing on top that moves and controls everything. So that's kind of like what a, what a rig does. Is A rig can control multiple bones um, for animating. So what we're about to do is like is a two-step process. So first we need to uh, generate the rig. So I'm gonna select my person mesh. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna select the armature. And then down here in our object data properties for the, the meta rig, there's this rigify generation dropdown. And we want to generate rig. Okay. All right, rigify error, bone spine 004 cannot connect chain, bone position is disjoint. Okay, let's look. So I had a feeling this was gonna happen. So I gotta just figure out which one is uh, bone four. So I'm opening this up, or what was it, spine four? Spine three, spine four, okay, is disjointed. Okay, it's this one. Um, so I believe this one needs to be connected to this. So here's your tip. Uh, with this one selected, I'm going to shift S and I'm going to move my cursor. Where is it? Cursor to selected. So you may have seen this little like uh, white and red circle. This is called your 3D cursor. 3D cursor. This is how you can uh, snap things together precisely. So I'm moving my 3D cursor to this bone, this joint. I'm going to take this joint and I'm going to shift S and I'm going to move selection to the cursor. So they're occupying the exact same spot. I, I believe this is the, the fix here. Uh, so let's try it again. Object mode. I'm selecting this and then I'm selecting the armature. Uh, do, 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 do regenerate. Oh, wait. oh, and so the rig didn't work. So I need to delete the rig. Regenerate rig. There we go. That was it. So if you get that error, um, it's because maybe one of your bones isn't connected. Um, all right. So now you can see that we have all these like little orange like shapes and things around here. But there's we still have to now. There's one more step to this. So this is a two parter. Um, now we have to do the armature deform creating the weight thing. So, um, same story. First we select the mesh and then I'm actually going, and then I, uh, da, 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 da. uh, so we have meta rig and rig. Then I'm going to shift, you can shift click on the rig, any one of these little lines here. And then we'll go to our parenting menu, control P. We'll do armature deform with automatic weights. All right, now we have a rig. You can see it looks kind of complicated. There's lots of like arrows and shapes and things. Um, at this point, we can actually hide the meta rig because we don't need that anymore. And we just have rig. So we can even call this like person rig. Um, and now if we go into pose mode, you can see all these things change colors. But these, uh, there's lots of different handles that you can play with and animate. So like if I grab the hand here, so like there's this, this kind of teal one around the hand, I can grab G and it's gonna kind of 
move the hand, but then also the other things that are attached to the hand. So it kind of moves the whole arm, which is kind of cool. Like, whoop. So maybe, well, uh, I'll like grab the elbow here. We can, whoops, I don't want to rotate it this way. So you kind of you kind of have to play with uh, which controls do what. Some of them do more than others. So like, if I wanted to have this guy wave, I'd probably just like move him up like this, rotate it like this, rotate it this way a little bit, or he could be like hi. This is a, this is a good one here. So like, this is for the torso. So it like keeps the hands and the feet locked into place, but then we'll kind of move everything else around. Right click to undo any of these. So like uh, this is for, oh yeah, that's like the shoulder rotation. Undo. Uh, this, this halo on the top is for like moving the head. Like, uh-huh. Um, let's see, what else can we do? So like the foot. So like if you pick up the foot, like his knee is gonna come with it and it'll bend at the hip. So you can stomp, stomp, stomp. Things like that. Yes, for whatever reason, like like these green ones don't weren't didn't do anything here. We undo all of these. Yes, like these green ones are nothing, which is interesting. So yeah, again, like it's not perfect, but Yeah, so this one is like for the leg, moving the leg. Moving the elbow. What, did I do S for scale? <laughs> G. Oh, wow, okay. So yeah, some of them have interesting effects. That one's just rotate. That one doesn't do anything. What about this one here? Oh yeah, so this is like neck movement. Cool. All right. So um, before we before we animate this character a little bit, um, let's let's talk about assignment six. Assignment six. So your assignment six is character animation. Create a ten second character animation. Use a character. Uh, you've created or the one provided in the lecture. Three points for having a rigged character. Three points for having at least three different poses. Two points for submitting a video file and a Blender file. And then two points for an on-time submission. Um, so, you know, notice that you don't get any points. There's no points assigned f for uh, having it being 10 seconds long. So like I'm looking for a few sec, like in the ballpark of 10 seconds. Um, what what is important here is getting your character rigged and just setting three different poses. Um, so in a moment we're going to do um, a character. I'm, I'm gonna we're gonna attempt to do a, a walk cycle. Uh, a very simple walk cycle with with this character to show you how to like keyframe and animate using the rig. So your anime your assignment doesn't need to be a walk cycle. You can follow along if you want. It'd probably be good to learn. Um, but you just need to have three different like poses. So maybe it's like a salute, and then it's maybe like a karate kick, and then maybe it's like I'm flying through the air. <laughs> you know, like just whoops, sorry. Um, just like animate it doing three different things. So it can be just be like, I'm doing this, now I'm doing this, and now I'm doing this. Maybe not thumbs up, but that is assignment six. So let's let's talk about animating. Let's let's do a walk cycle for fun. Um, now doing a, doing a, a animating human movements is is a difficult thing so uh i encourage you to maybe look up some reference material so actually like what what i'm going to do is i'm going to do like walk cycle and just do a, like a video search um a while ago you know on uh let's see 
Let's see if I can find one. Lock reference is what I'm searching. Oh yeah, here. This is a good one. So this is like somebody recorded a person walking and uh, and this is like something that you can look at to try to mimic, to get like the arm swing and like the knee bend and stuff right. So let's just try it. Let's see how we do. Um, let's start with um, an orthographic view. Where's my side? Okay. So um, we want to get uh, things in. So a, a cycle needs to start and end with the exact same position. Um, so I'm, I, I am going to use the, uh, the, what is this one called? The timeline editor. And I'm going to turn on auto king. So anytime I move something, it's going to add a keyframe to it. So just user beware. Uh, auto king, anytime anything is moved, it's going to add a keyframe to it. So I'm on frame one, let's say. And uh, I want to set like a stride forward to be like my starting keyframe. So then he'll take a step with the other foot and then back to the front and that'll be the cycle and it'll just repeat. Um, so starting on frame one. So I am just gonna kind of imagine that, um, you know, hand is forward rotated a little bit like this. And actually like, you're usually not like totally upright. You're kind of like, you know, down a little bit. I'm going to kind of move the torso down. I'm going to take the foot and uh, kind of put it out like this. I'm going to take the back foot, bring it back like this. Um, the, the, so this this thing on the heel here, if you if you rotate this, it kind of like turns the turns the toe. So that's actually kind of fun. And it's definitely what we're going to want to do. Um, so I'm just going to kind of put the foot on the ground like this. And uh, let me do, I'll do control three to get the other side. So I, I'm trying to actually imagine how you swing your arms. So like a lot of, sometimes people do opposite. So actually, so since this leg is back, this arm is going to be forward. And then uh, we'll move this one back. And you know, it's maybe kind of a dramatic arm swing, but that's fine. Cool. So the, here's, here's our starting pose. Again, this is gonna be like super basic. We're just gonna get through it. Um, and so like, just, I, I'm gonna kind of mark off the, those, the points of interest here. You know what, I'm actually gonna put this on frame zero. I want this to start on frame zero because that's, it's gonna be a little easier math for me. Um, so mapping this out a little bit now, um, I'll, I'll probably have, I'll probably have this be like 40 seconds long or 40 frames long. So then like frame 20 will be like the other foot forward, the other hand forward mirrored. And then frame 40 will be back to the, to the first foot. So back to this position. So, uh, one handy thing that we can do is if, if we like open up all of these, like uh, if I actually do A, if I hit A and select all of these, you can see that everything that everything that's uh, keyframed here. So like the hand, the right hand, the left hand, the torso, the foot, the heel, foot, heel, all that stuff. Um, what we can do now that we're at, we've got them all in position, we've, we've got them all keyframed and I can I can just take all of these keyframes. Uh, I can right click and do copy and then right click again and do paste flipped. And we should hopefully see him like switch sides really fast. Oops, it only did it for one. Oh no, it did it, there we go. Yeah, cool. So you can see that, yep, it's perfectly mirrored uh, from one side to the other. And so this, this has to do with um, the naming 
But this is why it also is handy to do, to use a uh, one of these kind of pre-built rigs is because everything is named um, left and right. So like you can looking at um, our like keyframes down here, you can say hand dot r hand dot l foot dot r foot dot l etc. Um, the dot l and the dot r is important because uh, it'll know that like okay if I'm copying mirrored. I'll take whatever's on the left and put it on dot r. Whatever's on dot r, I'll put it on dot l. So this kind of makes your life a lot easier. And then we can just paste again here, back to frame 40, and now it's like, shoop, 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 and he's already shuffling a little bit. So why don't I even just make this uh, 39, just technically. We don't want to repeat frame 40. Cool. So we've got, you know, the base. It's it's moving a little bit. But, uh, you know, people don't, like, shuffle their feet like this. So now we got to, like, add some things in between. So, like, frame 10. Let's, let's look at frame 10. So uh, in between E here, what are we going to do? So I... I think we need to G kind of move up a little bit because a lot of times like, you know, you kind of like move a little up and down as you're moving or as you're walking. Um, this foot that's sliding forward, uh, I want to just make sure I'm grabbing the right one. But you you pick your foot up, you know, as you as you walk. So let's just put this up in the air here. I don't know. What else? Um, sure. Let's just let's just take these ones right here as is. Copy, Control C, and then uh, right click, paste, flipped. Ah, but see now uh, the this one didn't do anything. Torso didn't. Animate so or so I want to grab torso copy paste. Hold on, hold on. I think I messed something up. Undo, 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 undo. Um, so yeah, let me just, let me do A, whoops, A for all. Select all these keyframes, copy, we can go to frame 30, and then uh, paste flipped like this. Is that doing it? Yeah, so he's starting to walk a little bit. So like you can finesse this a little bit too, like maybe um, like on frame zero, he's like moving his head this way. Oh, oh, you know what else we should do? We should do like the shoulders. So like or the chest is like rotated this way a little bit and then back this way. So like copy this one and then control shift V paste the reverse and then paste it again. So you can see there's like a little bit of shoulder action. We can also do like have a little head bob. So maybe on frame zero, head tilted this way a little bit. Copy that keyframe, control shift V, paste it here and then control V paste it back. Just walking like this a little bit, give it a little personality. The other things you could do are like you could, you know, you could play with your like graph editor a little bit to get like the feet to move a little bit more normally. But anyway, like this is you know this is a starting spot. This is this is a little walk cycle.
Ta da! And then render this out if you want. Put a camera and a light in here. So that's rigging, character animating. Um, so yeah, have fun with this. If you're if you're an animation student and this is what you've been waiting for the the whole semester, here it is. Um, yeah. Oh well, okay. Let me show, actually before before we're done done. Let me show you a couple more things about a rig. Um, stop this. So this is um, this these arrows on the bottom. Whoops. We go back into pose mode. The, the this big arrow thing is like the global control here. So you need to be conscious of like whether you're editing the pose or you're editing like the actual armature or rig or you're animating the actual object as a whole so there there are times where you may need to do all of these things um, so like if you actually wanted to have this person walk you could animate the object moving like this or you could go into pose mode and animate this global control on the bottom like this um, so you know a few different considerations to make anyway have fun email me if you have questions reminder nothing next week so um, finish your assignment five for sure and get started on your assignment six. So long. Goodbye.